On August 17th, there was a high school football game at Lakewood Stadium. And at the conclusion of the game, two young men who had attended the game were shot. Um, Damien Spear is 15 years old, was shot in the foot. Uh, he's recovered, he's doing well. Unfortunately, it's not going so smoothly for Isaiah Payton. He's 12 years old and the bullet that struck him has paralyzed him from the waist down. Despite our investigators' dil diligent work, we've been unable to make an arrest in this case. And so we're here today um, to announce some concrete initiatives to move forward in hopefully making an arrest. And Mayor Bottoms will speak to those initiatives that we have adopted. Mayor Bottoms. Good afternoon. Um, thank you to Ms. Allison Woods, Isaiah's mother, for being here today and to all of you all. Um, imagine sending your child to play in a football game and your child does what young men like to do and that is to be athletic and to have fun and to be around their friends. Imagine just a few hours later after your child has watched older kids play football hoping to learn something by watching kids a bit older than him. Imagine just a few hours later getting a call that your child is at Grady Hospital and that your child has been shot. That is what happened to Isaiah's mother just a few weeks ago. Isaiah played in a game earlier that day and he ended that day fighting for his life. There are cowards on our street who still walk around free. And so with the help of the Atlanta Police Department and the Atlanta Police Foundation, we are increasing the reward for these cowards to $10,000 for information to lead to their arrest. Also, there are billboards that are being put up as we speak. There's one near Carver High School. Also, there will be one near Mays High School seeking additional information. And we just ask that if there is anyone who knows anything, um, to please not be afraid to speak. Isaiah could be anyone's child, and it could have been anyone who was hit by those stray bullets. This is a young man with his entire life ahead of him, and it still is ahead of him. Um, I know that this is a family of deep faith, so we also ask for your prayers, but we also know that faith without work is dead. So we ask that you engage as if this were your child. And if you have any information that can lead to the arrest of these people, please contact Crime Stoppers at 404-577-TIPS. 404-577-TIPS. Our community and our city is counting on you. So this is Isaiah's mom, Allison Woods, and she just would like to speak to you for a few moments. Thank you. Um, I just want to um, first say that I just want to thank God for um, my child still been here. Um, and I also want to thank the, the police department, um, Atlanta and Chief Shield for um, bringing, uh, working to bring the person who shot my son, Isaiah, to justice. Um, um, on the day my son got shot, um, it really did something to my family, um, 
He's only 12 years old, and he's paralyzed from um, the chest down. Um, I can't believe it right to the day. Um, our whole family is in a state of shock. Um, he loves football, um, go to the game, hang out with his friends. Um, I just never thought that this would happen in a million years. Um, we've been suffering and going through emotional and financial distress because I had to leave my job to be at the hospital to learn how to care for my son. And um, I just wanted to say that um, right now I'm at a, um, I live in an apartment upstairs and I'm just trying to um, find a downstairs so that he can come home um, when he's when he's ready to be released and I just want to thank everybody for their prayers and support and I don't know who who shot my baby but my prayers is for whoever did this that they will come forward or somebody that know who who did it will come forward and just keep my family in prayers and and everything. So thank you. Yes. Thank you for being here today, first of all. We can only imagine that so many people saw what happened that day. Right. If you could speak directly to someone who knows, what would you say? Um, I just want to say if... Um, just imagine, like, um, I want to say if they could put themselves in my situation, if it was, like, their kid, uh, what would they do? And, like, come forward and just turn yourself in. Like, and um, I hope that they're not out here doing other stuff and making trouble for other people. Yes. Yeah, um, he's getting close to leaving the hospital. That's why, like, I'm struggling right now, trying to make it um, get away for him to have somewhere to stay that's handicap access accessible. Um, and he's at like T four, so that means um, he's paralyzed from the chest down. And they, no, he's at, um, yeah. Yes. So um, right now they they saying that because um, I have been to spinal cord classes and stuff, and they saying that um, this is the type of injury that you don't pretty much recover fully from it. It's gonna probably be that way. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you how is he? His emotional, mental recovery. How is he? Oh yes. Um, that's been my hardest thing to deal with throughout the whole experience like because he's very angry and um a lot of times I like I, I don't even like to sit and just see him going through that he's frustrated and um it's just it's hard for a mother to sit and watch you know and just actually watch your child you know go through that and ain't nothing you can do about it you know so that's been the hardest thing. Yep. Keith Shields, I know there was a lot of attention on this case early on. Um, maybe since over the last month, month and a half. Um, what has this case been like for investigators? Has, has there been any suspects cleared? Has it been dead ends? Uh, where's the case at right now and what's happening? Are you looking for more than one? You know, we cleared multiple suspects where it turned out to be dead ends. Um, yes, I think we feel that two people were shooting at one another. We've just, we've hit a wall. And, and as the mayor alluded to, there were so many people out there. Multiple people saw this. And we're hoping if, if their conscious, conscience won't motivate them, maybe $10,000 will, because we, we need to bring closure. 
we need to bring closure to Miss Woods and her family. It's the right thing to do. I can assure you we have turned over every imaginable rock. Um, at this point, we are, we are relying on someone to, to come forward with eyewitness testimony. shooting in mind over the last few days there's been an 18 year old hit by a stray bullet and, and a 13 month year old was shot yesterday any responses to the gun violence around Atlanta lately involving children you know um, <clears throat> my family's been through this um, my 18 year old nephew was killed in a case of mistaken identity about five years ago and it's um, She's giving me, <laughs> it's, you know, with a, a mother's heart that I stand here as mayor. And um, we are continuing to do all that we can do through law enforcement. And I'll let Chief Shields speak more on the tangible things that we are continuing to do. But so much of it has to do with who we are as a community and what we um, what we expect and what we will tolerate in our communities. And when you have incidents like this, we rely on everyday people to come forward and give us information that we need because the streets talk and the streets know far more faster um, most times than um, with our police department. It is the way that my nephew's murder was solved and most importantly, for people to shoot indiscriminately, as we've seen with Isaiah's case and the tragedies over the past week, um, it's just a matter of time. And by the grace of God, Isaiah is still here, uh, but it could be worst case scenarios. It was with a beautiful young woman last week and as it was with my nephew five years ago. And Chief, I'll let you speak more on that. But I do want to also, again, stress uh, what Ms. Wood shared, that Isaiah is scheduled for release, but he will not and cannot be released until they have a handicap accessible apartment. And so if there's anyone uh, who has a home or an apartment that they would like to make available to this family, it's needed immediately. Also, Ms. Woods has missed a great deal of work. She's not been able to work. Um, I'd like for the public to keep that in mind. She will also need transportation, a handicap accessible van as well. So if there's anyone in the public who is feeling particularly generous, um, those resources would be greatly appreciated. If you contact our Office of Constituent Services, we can help facilitate those donations and also um, through the Atlanta Police Department as well. We'll make sure that those donations are appropriately received and distributed. Do you want to add something, sure. Chief, on the oh, recent you. shootings? So to echo the mayor's sentiments, I mean, we're just we're sickened by it, um, especially Isaiah and um, the child that was sleeping innocently in her bed and is shot and killed. There's a proliferation of weapons, of guns. There's a lack of accountability by the courts. There's almost no conflict resolution skills amongst the younger generations that we're seeing. We've gotten so automated. And it's a, it's, a, it's a confluence of events that can have and has had tragic outcomes. And it, it's not okay. It's not okay. And so we go out every day, and that is why our focus is to get guns off the street. And it is why at every bend I am hammering the magistrate courts to keep these folks who are predisposed and committed to violence in jail it is why we have to see the juvenile courts review their measures and put something in place that has some level of effectiveness because we see kids crying out for help for, for basic fundamentals, food, water, the capacity to become something and have hope, 
This is not impossible, and this community is strong, but folks have to snap out of the business as usual mindset. But in the meantime, we're gonna make arrests and we're gonna make sure that these folks are held accountable. It's gonna happen. Also, uh, many of you all may have covered last week the ribbon cutting for the At Promise Youth Center in Mechanicsville, and that's really what we're trying to do at the root of it all. Our police department does a great job in responding to crime, but we have to continue to explore ways to stop it before it happens. And the At Promise Youth Center uh, over in the Vine City English Avenue area has been committed to that. We just broke ground on one in Mechanicsville, and there will be one coming soon um, over in the Allison Court area on Campbellton Road at the Young Family YMCA. So we will continue to do what we can do to provide other opportunities for our young people. But meanwhile, there are still people who are, who are committed to doing evil. And it's important that we get them off of our streets as quickly as possible. So thank you all for being here today.